Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now on the 12th of October 2021, NVIDIA released driver version 49613. Like any other driver, it brings with it support for the latest games, including the Crisis Remastered Trilogy and Back for Blood. It also adds DLSS support for a handful of titles, including Rise of and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. However, this latest game ready driver also marks the end of support for Kepler GPUs, as well as Windows 7, 8 and 8.1. If you own a once flagship GTX 680, 780 Ti, Titan or any of the cards on this fairly long list, then the latest driver version you can install is 47212, which was released on the 20th of September. The same applies if you have a newer graphics card but are still using an older operating system like the aforementioned and legendary Windows 7. With that said, if you are the proud owner of a 750, 750 Ti or OEM 745 and you have Windows 10 or 11, you can continue to benefit from the latest drivers because these cards are all based on the Maxwell architecture. To someone like me who thinks that the 750 Ti is one of the best budget graphics cards ever released in the history of hardware, well this is music to my ears. Long live the 750 Ti, and 750 and 745. The 6 and 700 series of graphics cards not only include some of my personal favourites, but I'm sure a lot of you watching have had one or more experiences with them, whether it be gaming at 60fps on a high-end dual GPU beast like the GTX 690, or struggling to maintain a smoother than PowerPoint presentation experience on low-end, borderline insufferable hardware like the GT710. This isn't surprising news, Nvidia said months ago that this would happen like it does with all graphics card lineups. The difference right now is that upgrading your GPU isn't as easily and cheaply done as it was in previous years, so if you are hoping to squeeze a few more months out of that GTX Titan, well actually you still can. Just because official driver support has ended, it doesn't mean that your old flagship card is rendered immediately unusable. You just won't get the performance patches and optimizations included with game ready drivers for the latest titles. The cards are still getting critical security updates for the next three years too. To conclude, I've thrown up a handful of footage from previous 6 and 700 series tests as a sort of celebration of the series, demonstrating both the capabilities and struggles of certain cards. I'll continue to benchmark Kepler cards into the future, and keep an eye on how they keep up in modern titles. While it's always a shame to see certain hardware hit end of life status, the 2 gigs of VRAM that most of the cards on the full list have are definitely limiting in modern games, and as a personal recommendation, anyone looking to buy a used GPU right now for 1080p gaming in the very latest games should at least look at a 4GB option for sale within the 900 series lineup or above. That said, anyone with a little less cash to spend who doesn't mind playing at lower settings or resolutions, well you might just be able to find a 6 or 700 series card for even cheaper now. So it's not all bad news. With all that said and done, this has been a quick update on the situation regarding Kepler graphics cards. I thought I'd talk about it because it is sort of the end of an era, in a way, and many of us have had experiences with these legendary GPUs over the years I'm sure. Thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed it leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll be back with another hardware related video in the next one.